Lots of players can just be loud and raucous and undisciplined. Right? That's not... Anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. That takes no, no, no practice at all. So, this is the fifth in the series of ten videos about the lessons of Nat Riddles. And this one is a little more formless than most, but it was an element of Nat's playing that just grabbed me, and so it's one of the hardest to convey, because if you were there and you sat next to him while he was playing, you'd get it instantly. You're not here with me, and I, I'm just not as good at this, but it's still an ideal for me, and it was something that I noticed again and again. So if I, if I had been around Nat in 86, and then I saw him in 89, it was the same thing. And the lesson is, or the, 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 yeah, the, the teaching, is create power in reserve create power in reserve. So what does that mean? What might that mean? And, and and how could you demonstrate that? Well, it obviously it has nothing to do with what particular holes you're playing. It doesn't really have to do with technique. Let me give you though, let me let me give you an example of what it might mean. Number 1, I'll, I'll, here's a practical consequence of create power in reserve. People are always surprised that somebody who's been playing as long as I have, I, call me a pro if you want, a part-time pro uses stock harp, stock marine band, occasionally tweaked by the factory. Um, occasionally I get I get those kind of harps, but basically stock harps. Now I, will, I do have a few custom harps, but basically I'm playing off, what we call off-the-shelf, OTS, off-the-shelf harps. And the truth is that I, although I have certain things that I use custom harps for, I prefer because I grew up playing on these. They take more strength, and I've certainly had the experience. When I say strength, I mean your lips, your chops, have to be stronger, but I think that's a good thing. Um, I used to, there was a line that I used to quote, sounds really strange for a harmonica player to quote Ernest Hemingway, but he had a, a line in one of his, I think it was the movable feast, a movable feast, when he said, you know, we used to, we used to, uh, they would go skiing in the Alps, but they didn't have ski lifts, they'd have to walk. He goes, it was good to walk up the hills. Walking up the hills gave you legs strong enough to ski down the hills. And I always thought that was interesting, the idea that it's actually a gain to do a little bit more, uh, to do more work, more exercise. So I grew up playing stock harps. Occasionally I would get one that just didn't want to play. I'm talking about, I'm a Honer endorser, but I'm talking about occasionally you get a Honer Marine Band that didn't want to play. I still don't know why that happens. It still occasionally happens, but it's rare. It's much rarer these days than it was. Well, there are certain licks that you make on the harp that require considerable strength. Not everything does. Um, a nice clean two-hole draw just requires getting everything out of the way. But that 3-4 combination with just the right amount of bend and, and, and pulling it down as you bend it slightly so that the two notes jam together. Nat had that. Power in reserve. So in order to be able to manifest that kind of power and do it in the moment <laughs> to be able to kick it in really quick and let it go really quick takes a lot of practice a lot of time in the woodshed it takes strength the harmonica is a lot like a trumpet. My son plays trumpet. I'm always saying, do your 15 minutes. I don't, I'm not one of those tiger moms that says an hour or two hours or five hours a day, but I do say 15 minutes. Why? Because if you do it, it, it creates muscle memory, but it also creates a sort of ongoing level of strength that's required in order to be able to play stuff. Same thing is true with the high notes. So create power and reserve. You have to practice enough so that the stuff that actually does take strength is something you can Whip in and whip out of, just like that. You need to have extra. You can't be always right on the edge of your effective strength level. If you're doing that, you're, you're you you can't. You're just not on top of it, and we all feel that. Well, Nat had a lot of strength, a lot of power, and here's a key thing that I'm going to challenge you to do is to to find out whether you have this, which is, do you tend to speed up when you play more loudly? when you play more intensely. Most players do. Even some very good players. Little Walter has a couple of tracks where he's speeding up a little. 
But ideally, you wouldn't do that. Ideally, you could bear, you could nail the groove. So when I, I've never tried that particular exercise, but the way I tried to challenge myself there was to get a groove and then see if I could do it lightly and heavily and keep the groove steady. So that would be a good exercise for you because what most people tend to, it just to, which is to radically change intensity but keep the tempo the same. So lesson number four was disarticulate the timekeeping function from the tone producing function. Lesson five is also about the groove in some sense. Strength and reserve means a lot of different things. It means practice so that your chops maintain a high level, right? Because you don't always want to be right near the edge of what you're capable of doing. You want to have something in reserve, power in reserve, um, so that you're not digging to the bottom of the well, except when you have to. And that's what woodshedding does. Um, there's another thing that happens that's important. Um, that, which is that there's a certain kind of sound that's produced when you hit it hard, when you hit the harp hard. And please don't confuse that with loudness, which is to say what you could get if you were amplified and just turned up the amp. This is one of the reasons why it's not a good idea to start playing amplified harp too early. And I did, I played it too early, <laughs> um, but I, I backed and filled later on. We, because you get you, you, you get used to the amp, being, the amp being able to compensate for the lack of power on your part. But there's something else. Lots of players can just be loud and raucous and undisciplined. Right? That's not... Anybody can do that. Anybody can do that. That takes no, no, no practice at all. What's much harder... I don't think so. Have not practiced in a week. Now if I do if I want to get power and reserve, I always practice small things. I'm not getting that three very good. Use, use your foot to create the groove. Uh-oh. sped up now. I don't know if you could feel that, but I sped up. So the reason we practice a lot, the reason we practice hard is so when the time comes for performance, we're not working too hard. That's just in us. That's just in us. Power in reserve. So my warm-up routine Now, again, I haven't played for a week, so it's a little rough, and I'm breathing hard. <sighs> Power in reserve. It's not easy. What do you think boxers do? They're on the bag, right? Why do you think they do that? So, that, so it's all in the reflexes. All right. So power in reserve is not sloppy power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back off a little bit in terms of tempo. So 
This is embarrassing, but it's also instructive. Um, I think I call this Adam's warm-up warm exercises, and I think I've been selling it for 10 years on TradeBit, and I can't do my own warm-up because I haven't practiced for a week. <laughs> Let's, this would be fun. This would be the actual real-time... I'm not going to cut this. I'm not going to edit. I'm just going to do this. <laughs> That's a hard one. Now, at that precise moment, when I finally began to get it, my lips began to get a little wobbly, a little rubbery. You know that feeling, a little tension? So I'm a good example of a schlub right now who does not have power in reserve. I'm right on the edge of what I can do. Now, you, you're, you're permitted after watching this, go to, go to Gusso Crossroads Blues, listen to what that guy's doing back in 2010. Exactly a decade ago, I had woodshitted like a mofo. I had plenty of power in reserve and I could do whatever I felt like doing. And so I could go on, six, seven minutes, didn't get tired. That's power in reserve. But again, this is, uh, so let's pause. Nat didn't play that way. Nat, what Nat could do, at one point he came to New York and stayed with me. And I had a, a, about a dozen harps that had a blown out note. All his harps had been ripped off, been stolen out of the back of his car, the trunk. He'd left them overnight, so he had no harps. So he said, let's go through, what I, I, let's go through my stuff. And let's see if there's anything here you can use. Some of them were really dry and, and, and I hadn't played them for a while. And he, and he didn't clean them, you know, we didn't clean harps back then. We just took them out and he tried them. And what amazed me was he could get his sound out of any of those harps. Now there were harps there I couldn't get, they were like the ones I didn't like that I couldn't get a sound out of. He had so much chops strength that he could do it. And he could play, you know, his... Uh, <laughs> That's the Nat, the El Cafe Street theme. Anyway, I think I've gone on too long on this lesson, and I don't really think I've communicated effectively, but hopefully there's something here. Power in reserve. Power in reserve.